Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, we're in the shop tonight on this rainy Friday and I've been putting in nut plates on my tank bay enclosure that holds the panel on and it occurred to me that I have never actually demonstrated how I do that and uh, maybe most of you won't care but maybe one or two of you will and if this helps then that's good so let's chat about what I do and how I do it. So. These are the holes, the dimple holes for the number six screw right here. And behind it will sit a nut plate that will be riveted in such as so, like this. And that allows the screw to screw into the nut plate. Now, there's a couple of ways of securing that nut plate in place. Um, a lot of Bearhawk builders that I read on the forums, what they'll do is they'll come in and they will dimple the hole here that the rivet goes through. They'll dimple it with a dimple die for a number three on either one. And then they will take the nut plate itself and they will dimple die it as well right on the hole. Um, for me, that's a lot of work. Uh, the nut plate gets kind of distorted. This area gets kind of, you know, there's a lot, go a lot of metal being shaped and formed here, shrinking and stretching. And to me, it's just, just isn't, the, uh, isn't the way I wanted to do it. So mostly because I'm lazy and I didn't want to dimple dye all that stuff. But moreover, um, I think it looks better the way I do it anyhow. So what I use, instead of a 426, an AN426 countersunk rivet, I use an AN, excuse me, an NAS uh, 1097 rivet. The 1097 rivet is often referred to as a skin rivet or a oops rivet. And the reason they call it a skin rivet is it allows you to machine countersink on a piece of skin and not screw up the hole where with as a 426 you would actually remove enough material that you'd start to the hole would get all oblonged and out of out of round and wouldn't look good and i have a 426 sitting in this hole right here and i have a 1097 right there and the reason i put those two in there they're just in there temporarily is so you can see the difference in the size of the head of the rivet you can see that the 1097 is much smaller than the 426. so I've already uh, taken the liberty of, prior to starting the video, to machine countersink these holes. There's one there, and then the other one's machine countersunk as, countersunk as well. And as you can see here, these have not been treated yet. The way I do that is I use my uh, handheld, my handheld electric screwdriver with a little, with my uh, deburring bit in there, and I just kind of give it a couple of quick shots. Stick it in there, test it to see if it's flush, give it a couple more quick shots until I get it. Just kind of do it by feel. And I've done so many now, I can pretty much do them very rapidly. And then, so now I've got a 1097 skin rivet in here. In here, I don't have to countersink or dimple or any of this. Oh, I should, I should say, I don't have to dimple any of this, nor do I have to dimple my nut plate. It's just simply a matter of grabbing a Coleco. grabbing a nut plate, and I'm trying not to whack the camera, folks, so just bear with me because I'm working around it. And then uh, this rivet's already in, as you can see right there, and I just push it in, put the hole of the nut plate, or are we right there on the, on the rivet itself? So that lines up one side, then I just line up the hole on the other side, stick a Coleco in there to hold everything in place, and give her a squeeze. So what I'll do is I'll back the camera up here a little bit so I can get the squeezer in there. So you're going to get bounced around a little bit here. Watch on the monitor to make sure everything's good. All right, now the camera is out of the way and we'll grab our squeezer. Now normally this is all very, this all happens pretty fast. I can do one in about a minute but uh, I'm trying to work around the tripod of the camera and whatnot. So hopefully you can see, here's a squeezer right here, big old honker. Set up, bring it in there, hold her on. Bingo, bango, that one's done. Take out my Coleco, throw in another rivet, just like so. And give her a squeeze. Both perfectly flush and smooth. 
And that's it. That is a nut plate installation. We'll move this thing in close so you can see it. You'll notice the dirt on my skin. It's not really dirt so much as it's the preservative material that Vans puts on these nut plates to keep them from rusting and then it gets all over my hands and then all over my airplane so I just take a little cleaner and clean it off and there you go. So there's yet another nut plate installed. I got about 70 more to go and this, uh, this tank bay will be done. Um, hopefully you got something out of that and like I said they're NAS 1097 AD 3- and then whatever length you need. You can get them in uh, a uh, 80 four dash whatever you need um, just look them up on the interwebs and you should be able to find them um, these nut plates by the way I'll sneak one up in here these nut plates come from vans aircraft um, they're the cheapest i've found anywhere i think they're they're 67 cents or maybe a dollar i don't know but they're the cheapest anywhere don't get them from spruce don't get them from wicks get them from vans he's got them they've got them and they're cheap and then uh, just do a internet search for 1097 rivet and you are on your way so I'll post a couple pictures close-up pictures of the uh, head difference between a 1097 and a 426 and it'll really make sense to you then when you see it so with that we'll clock out of the shop here and press on um, and until next time we will see you in the shop <laughs>